Hello and welcome back to Ride Rescue. In my last episode, I took you through straightening out the, one of the front fenders and removing a horrible patch job, a rust repair that the prior owner had done. Uh, now I'm going to go back and finish up what I got started uh, when I tried to smooth out the bottom section of the one fender. It was just too badly stretched and, and bent. So I'm going to cut that off, prepare a patch for it. Uh, it's actually going to take two or three patches to put that section back together since I wasn't able to save the gray fender. So I'll end up putting <laughs> both fenders together as one. So I'll walk you through that on this episode and if I get enough time, I'll do the patch panel and the straightening on the other fender as well. So. It, uh, it's so wavy and so stretched. But, uh, it doesn't make sense to spend a whole lot of time on it when I have a patch panel that's nice and straight. It does have a little bit of a ripple in the patch panel and the rust area I was going to take the backing plate anyway, so I'm going to plan out how I'm going to cut this and we'll get that going. There is a uh, slight dent and a crease along here where they scraped something, scraped a curve or whatever. Uh, easy to repair. Uh, I want to get down far enough, but I don't want to get down into this area where it's, it's pretty wavy. So if I cut it between those two, then I should be good to go. Good old 70 style. So I've been uh, trimming away, obviously, and before I get any further, I uh, need to make a little bit of a template to follow because when I start cutting this main support out, if I don't get the length right or the arch right, it's not going to meet up with the door or the body. So I'm going to plan ahead. Make a guide to go back and look at. So there's my curve, there's my length, patch panel with some patches, and uh, somewhere in this area. But, um, best case scenario, I wouldn't have to cut this off, but I think. Uh, that is going to be the easiest way to repair this area. Back to cutting. So I trimmed the panel down to a manageable size. There was too much rust here. So I decided to trim it right at the inner brace and make it easier to line up. And there was just barely enough good solid metal from the other panel for the patch panel. So once I got this piece cut, I made a template out of this piece, used this body line and, and the cut line for the main panel, or for the inner panel. And uh, once I have that laid out, now we'll cut this off and this will have a nice accurate place to go back in. Now I gotta figure out how to cut this inner piece. I want to overlap this panel with the inner panel, um, one or the other, so that I can keep a straighter edge. All right, we've got it all cut out. Let's see how we did. Take a magnet line up that area. That one, this one. Wow, that took a lot longer than expected. But uh, there we have it. I've uh, got the uh, patch panel for the area that was all stretched and bent. I've got the patch panel for the area that was rusted out. And I've got the inner brace support uh, all sized and ready to weld in. So. What I gotta do is clean up all the edges, front and back, and we start welding, finally.
So it goes without saying. But just to be sure, we have everything exactly where it needs to be. We will uh, double check all the, the measurements and the alignment. And checking the other fender, I can see that this line is supposed to be straight, and it is. And I double checked the uh, the shape of the fender with the other fender on the other opposite side as well as the door and uh, that shape is something you'll have to really keep an eye on because once I start tacking everything into place um, this could easily get off so I will now get everything prepped and ready for welding uh, we'll, we'll sand off all the paint and clean up all the edges when I prep for welding, I found that if I leave any contaminants on the back side of my work, it has a tendency to creep up through the weld. So uh, we'll clean up bo both sides of all the weld surfaces as much as we can uh, so we don't get the contaminants in the weld that just causes it to bubble and blister and, and not get a good bond. Before we start welding, I can't stress enough how much prep is important in making sure everything is aligned. Um, this area could easily be off a little this way. It can be off this way. So I've got my, my template clamped. I know this shape is correct. I've got these clamps in place to hold my gaps for welding, which brings up a point. I don't know if anybody was wondering what these little guys are. They are a, a clamp that keeps a, a perfect gap of space between the metal parts. And you can see I'm super tight right here. I would like to open that up. So I'll begin with welding on this side and spot welding and tacking this and then I can get my grinder in there and open up some of those areas. Some of you may be wondering why I use these uh, parts from the fender, from the other fender, the gray panels. Um, the way I see it, uh, use what you have and we're on a tight budget, why not? Uh, plus, I really don't want to run to the store and get a sheet of metal, a nice clean new sheet. So, nothing wrong with grinding down on a budget and uh, making what you have work. I'm uh, keeping with the 70s style, doing the metal work. I got my uh, oxycetylene tanks out, my little torch, I've got my rod, and we're gonna start uh, welding. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I got my Lincoln. Why would I mess with that? Uh, for years, that's the way I did it. I got out the torch and I heated up the metal. A few years back, I got my new Lincoln. And uh, that was a game changer. It's made everything so much faster, so much easier, and so much better. Less warp, less heat. And we'll do it the right way. To a good start. I need to uh, adjust my helmet. It's too dark so I can't see what I'm doing. I need to uh, adjust my welder a little bit 
think I need it just a little bit hot. So the key to uh, keeping from warping, even with the thick panels that they used from the 60s, uh, we need to bounce around uh, and skip well so that we don't overheat. I've been practicing a little bit. I think I've got my technique down and I've got my welders set just right. So let's uh, weld in. Definitely need to change my welding wire. I, I ran out of my uh, recommended spool that I was using. I um, laid a much better weld. I switched over to uh, flux core. And it has a tendency to sputter and spit. And got the job done and I'll get some more wire before I do that other fender. Once I flip the panel over, you can see good penetration all the way through. Nice solid welds. So from the back side I can see I have really deep penetration. So I know I can grind off the top side completely smooth and not have to worry about having any weak welds. So we'll, uh, we'll use a standard die grinder. Use a standard grinding wheel and uh, just take the tops off. That's the quickest method. And then we'll use a a standard little grinding pad to flatten it all out. So let's get started. Of course, we need our uh, protective gear. I like to wear a mask. Uh, I have a tendency to, to get some sinus issues when I'm grinding. There's just enough materials. So it's always best to be safe. I was using a uh, 36 grit uh, as well as my uh, little cutoff wheel to really knock these down. Uh, the 36 grit leaves a pretty deep scratch. I'm going to switch over to a 60 grit uh, and uh, clean this up a little bit more. It'll flatten out and smooth out a lot of that really deep scratch too. But with the 60 grit, it will still give us really good bite for the uh, Filler that I grab into. Getting pretty close. Uh, I've got some high spots and some low spots, and I need to uh, jolly and hammer a little bit. But, uh, in grinding, I've left a pretty sharp edge along this. I just take, I like to use a flat surface to just clean that up. I could run the grinder across, but it's, it's still going to leave some high and low spots because it's so aggressive. But with using an 80 grit, I can just take flat in that area out, roll that edge mimic what was in the factory edge and then once we get back with the, the filler um, then it'll clean up any of these slight high and low spots that are still there but that's pretty good very happy with how that turned out well, let's just take a minute and talk about butt welds um, some guys will do a lap um, they will they'll put a little little fold, a uh, little overlap. Um, you can spot weld it. You can weld all along the edge. That's, a lap weld is going to give you an area for water and moisture to get in and it's going to rust. It's not anywhere near as permanent as a butt weld. Plus with a butt weld, uh, 
you just get a higher quality finish both inside and out. If I was going to do a show car finish, and I'm finishing the inside and you can see it, a lap weld is going to show. Uh, inside of a trunk, same thing um, as you're patch paneling the inside of a trunk. A lot of the, those panels can be seen. The lap welds just aren't a real professional finish look. Um, with a butt weld, you can sand and finish both sides and make it look like nothing has ever been done to it. It looks better. It lasts longer. Yeah, there's there's other ways if you're just want, going to want to quickly do a panel. When you're working on a flat panel in an area like this, um, heat metal it, it wants to just crawl. This has been crawling on me quite a bit. Try to keep your your grinding moving. Uh, try not to concentrate on one area and get it too hot. Um, I had a lot of metal right here that I was trying to thin down and it's grown on me, it, it's bubbled, so uh, I'll have to, to tap that back down. Hopefully I don't have to get out my torch and shrink it. But uh, keep it moving fairly quickly. And try not to just concentrate on one spot. So I welded this panel up with a butt joint. This area ended up being just slightly higher than this area. You can see the dark edge. You want to clean that up as much as possible. I could bend it, tap it, and, and flatten it out. But I could also just leave it and, and not risk going through that weld because if I keep cutting, uh, I might end up through that weld surface and that panel is going to split. I do have very good penetration. I can fill all the way through on the other side. Um, I, I left a, about a sixteenth of an inch gap. It's pretty much the thickness of the grinding cut wheel. Um, that'll allow enough of the metal and the weld to really get a good butt to butt joint. Uh, so if you do cut through, if you wind, wind up grinding off a surface, uh, you grind off the weld, the, grind, the weld wasn't penetrated far enough, it will crack on you. Um, just take your grinder wheel, open that back up, and lay in another weld. Uh, when I first started doing butt welds, I did that a few times on a few panels before uh, I was able to get the depth of the weld and get confident enough that I can grind it down and, and still have a good strong panel. And I feel pretty good about this area now. We'll tool it. I've got a little bit of a high spot I can fill right here. There's a panel on the back side of that, so I can't get back in there and hold it with my dolly. I've got a bit of a low spot and a little bit of a high spot. I can work tapping on this side to up and holding it down on this side to pull it back down. Bit of a high spot right here. Heavier gauge metal, uh, you can get away with with tooling fairly heavy. But on a lighter gauge, if you keep hitting that anvil in the same area, it's going to stretch. It's going to keep growing. Um, 
try to work around it without hitting directly on it. Um, keep it moving uh, and chase the anvil rather than hitting directly on it. You will stretch it. And a little bit of a low spot here. There was a crease. Keep working it. See if I can keep from torching it. I don't want to apply too much heat. So I've got a low spot right along in here. Uh, it's about an eighth of an inch. I could easily fill that. But again, I, I'd like to have a little more pride in my work. So I'm going to keep working that until it is just a skim coat. Um, you might hear some of the, the real high-end builders, auto builders, that actually do metal work where everything is just tooled and finished. They work it and work it until it is just smooth and they grind it. Pretty much no filler. Uh, a lot of hours, a lot of patience, but it can be done. Excellent. This panel is uh, ready for filler. I've got some other areas. I uh, want to be doing some filler on too. I'll, I'll uh, start pressing and we'll, we'll move on. Excellent. So thank you for watching this episode of Ride Rescue. I've got more videos coming. I've got a lot of work left to do on these front fenders. So if you could give me a like. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And we'll see you again next time. Goodbye for now.